The Exoze is the most widely used anti-ship missile in naval battles. This weapon system, which has proven itself in many wars, played an important role in the transformation of naval warfare concepts. This missile, which can still reach large markets with its new models, has been the fear of ships for nearly half a century. Now, we're investigating the Exoze, a true anti-ship missile legend. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start, and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Today, the anti-ship missiles are indispensable for the Western naval planners. Nevertheless, this acceptance took time. The impact of the Exoze played an important role in this change. Before investigating it, let's briefly take a look at the history of the anti-ship missiles. The works on the development of the anti-ship missiles started in the Second World War. At the early stages of the war, Nazi Germany realized that a new weapon system is required to carry out the air attack against the surface combatants full of anti-aircraft guns. To answer this requirement, German engineers developed the early examples of the anti-ship missiles. They could be launched from a bomber out of range and altitude of anti-aircraft guns and hit accurately a ship-sized target. During the war, the Fritz X, which was one of them, sunk many ships with Italian battleship Roma in particular. Despite these successes, the Western navies hadn't shown enough interest in the anti-ship missiles until 1967. On October 21, 1967, a Soviet-made P-20 Tirmut missile launched from an Egyptian Komar-class boat sunk the Israeli Navy destroyer INS Ailey. Now, the naval staff had to accept that naval guns became obsolete. In fact, the French engineers had already recognized the importance of the anti-ship missiles a long time ago. Nevertheless, the conservative staff of the French Navy was not ready for this change, until the sinking of INS Ailey. By the early 1960s, air-to-surface guided missiles had already become common for the air forces. Therefore, encouraged by this accomplishment, Noraviation Company of France offered to develop a ship-based model of the AS-30 air-to-surface missiles to the French Navy in 1963. Yet, this offer didn't receive the expected attention. Hence, Noraviation decided to continue the work as a private venture. However, there was no demand from foreign markets too. So, the project continued remarkably slow. As we mentioned before, the sinking of INS Ile changed the perspective not only in France, but worldwide. In 1968, the French Navy gave a green light to equip its ships with the new anti-ship missiles called Exocet, developed by Nord Aviation. During the process, Nord Aviation merged with Sud Aviation to create Aerospatiale. Since 1970, this company continued the project. The first customer of the MM38, the ship-based model of the Exocet, became Greece. One day later, France ordered for it. After trials which began in 1970 and lasted four years, the serial production of the missile commenced. The works on the air launch model of the Exocet, the AM-39, started in 1972. One year later, an SA-321 Super Fallon helicopter conducted the first fire trial of the missile successfully. The French Navy, evaluating the data from this trial, demanded some changes. For example, Aerospatial engineers redesigned the control surfaces. Now, an aircraft flying at supersonic speeds could launch the missile. The French Navy also demanded more engine power. Depending on the increased engine power, the engine mount of the missile was changed with steel ones. Following the modifications, the AM-39 became operational in 1979. The French Navy also demanded the submarine launch version of the Exocet. Actually, the primary task of this model was not the surface attack. French naval staff had developed a new concept. Once a submarine would send a torpedo to its target, 
it reveals its presence and becomes a target for the enemy anti-submarine warfare ships. According to the new concept, the submarine would win time to escape by performing salvo firing two to four guided missiles against its hunters. First firing test of the submarine launch version of the Exocet, the SM-39, conducted in 1982 and it became operational three years later. As early as 1979, France started working on the MM-40, the advanced model of the Exocet. That year, the works began on the MM-39 as the variant of the MM-38 adaptable to smaller platforms. However, after a while, the French Navy demanded a longer range version. So, the MM-39 program underwent a revision and turned into MM-40 program. In the 1990s, France started the ANF program to develop a supersonic anti-ship missile to replace the Exocet. However, as the first Cold War was over, the need for such a highly capable system was reduced. Thus, France revised the program and decided to upgrade its MM40s with a new altimeter and booster. This model is called the Block 2. The Block 3 model, ordered in 2018, is lighter than its predecessor and had a longer range. In 2010, the first firing of the MM40 Block 3 was conducted from the Horizon class air defense destroyer FS Chevalier Paul. Its GPS navigation system gives this version limited land attack capability. The MM40 soon became favorite among all MM38 users. Argentina, Bahrain, Brazil, Brunei, Bulgaria, Chile, Colombia, Cyprus, Ecuador, Egypt, France, Germany, Greece, India, Indonesia, Kuwait, Malaysia, Morocco, Nigeria, Oman, Peru, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Thailand, Tunisia, the United Arab Emirates, and the Uruguay are current users of the land, ship, and submarine launch versions of the Exoz. Belgium, Cameroon, Georgia, South Korea, Turkey, and the UK are the former users of the missile. Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Egypt, France, Greece, Morocco, Pakistan, Peru, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates still use the MA-39, while Indonesia, Iran, Iraq, Libya, and Venezuela retired it. Different models of the missile have different specifications. The MM-38 is 5.12 meters, the AM-39 4.69 meters, the SM-39 4.68 meters, the Block 1 MM-40 5.8 meters, and the Block 3 MM-40 is 5.9 meters long. All versions have 350 millimeters diameter. The wingspan of the MM-38 is 1.04 meters. The wingspan increased to 1.09, 1.1, and 1.13 meters on the AM-39, SM-39, and MM-40 respectively. The Exocet has a 165 kg penetration warhead regardless of the model. These missiles weigh 735, 670, 655, 870 and 780 kg respectively. The first four variants with solid rocket engines have a maximum speed of Mach 0.93. The Black 3 MM40 has the TRI 4263 turbojet propulsion system and can reach a maximum speed of Mach 0.9. Their maximum range is 42, 70, 50, 75, and 200 km, respectively. Of the Exocet models with inertial navigation and active radar guidance systems, only the Block 3 MM40s have additional GPS. The MM38 can cruise at sea state 6 at an altitude of 100 meters, while the MM40 performs sea skimming at sea state 7. Thanks to its advanced fire and control system, two MM40 can be fired simultaneously against two separate targets. The early models of the Exocet can turn by 30 degrees after launch, while the later versions by 90 degrees. 
The ADAC radar of the Exocet has a range of 24,000 meters. It guides the missile to its target in the last 12 to 15,000 meters of the attack. After detection of the target's location, the Exocet lowers to an altitude of 8 meters and performs its final attack. This altitude can decrease to as low as 3 meters on calm waters. So, the target may not detect the incoming Exocet until it's only 6,000 meters away. The Block 2 model has Super ADAC radar, which is more resistant against electronic jamming. Before firing the AM39 variant, the target has to be within 30 degrees range of the aircraft radar. After the firing, the missile performs a free fall for about 10 meters. Then, AM39 stabilizes itself, lowers to an altitude of 9 to 15 meters and begins its cruise. The Exocet activates its self-destruction mechanism if it fails to hit the target but flies over it. It means the missile could still damage the ship because of the explosion. Thanks to its delayed action fuse, the Exocet penetrates the hull of the ship first and detonate later. At least in theory. The combat reports show that this fuse has a serious problem for detonating the warhead. Yet, interestingly, it has been often seen that the missile destroyed its target by burning it with its remaining fuel. The most striking example of this was experienced undoubtedly in the 1982 Falkland War. On May 4, 1982, one of the two AM-39s, fired by an Argentine Super Eton Dow, hit HMS Sheffield, a Type 42 class destroyer of the Royal Navy. Because its warhead hadn't exploded, the missile created a big hole on the starboard side of the hull and traveled into the ship. At first sight, the destroyer was lucky, but its remaining propellant caused a catastrophic fire and HMS Sheffield couldn't be saved. In this attack, the second AM-39 crashed into the ocean. You can find detailed information about this attack in our Type 42 and P2 videos. On May 25, 1982, SS Atlantic Conveyor container carrier also fell victim to another air-launched Exocet. On June 12, 1982, an MM-38 Exocet missile hit the HMS Glamorgan, a county-class destroyer of the Royal Navy. The captain of the ship made a wise decision and turned her stern to the missile. The MM-38 didn't strike the destroyer's side and penetrate the hull. After the explosion, it created two big holes one on the hangar deck and the other in the galley below. Also, the missile caused the explosion of the ship fully armed and fueled Wessex helicopter and severe fire. However, the HMS Glamorgan survived. There were interesting points in this attack. The MM-38 launchers had been disassembled from an old Argentine destroyer, RIA Segi, and transported to the Falklands by a C-130. This improvised coastal battery didn't have a proper search radar and fire control system. For this reason, the Argentines could hit the HMS Glomorgan by the third time. The first missile hadn't left the launcher. The second missile hadn't been able to find the target. In fact, this missile's first combat success was in 1981, before the Falklands War. An AM-39 fired by Iraq damaged the Liberian bulk carrier Al-Tajdar in the Persian Gulf. During the tanker war, part of the Iran-Iraq war, the Exocet damaged about 135 commercial ships. When oil transport to the west was interrupted because of the war, the US Navy started to escort oil tankers in the Persian Gulf. In 1987, a modified Falcon 50 business jet of Iraqi Air Force fired two AM-39 to an Allward Hazard Periclass frigate, USS Stark. The ship command staff misjudged the situation. For them, a business jet was not a threat, so the countermeasure systems were not activated. USS Stark realized that she was under attack when the ADAC radar activated itself in the last 10,000 meters. It was too late for the reaction of the decoy launchers and Mark 15 Phalanx close and weapon system of the frigate. Even though USS Stark didn't sink, it was heavily damaged and was out of service for a long time. 
the Exocet has always been able to update itself according to the changing naval combat requirements. However, the era of fifth generation stealth anti-ship missiles with more advanced guidance systems is now beginning in the West. There is a talk of a future in which supersonic missiles that have been in use for a long time in the East will be replaced with hypersonic ones. The future doesn't look as bright for the Exocet as the past, but it will continue to shine as the legend with its role in the transformation of Western navies and with its success in wars. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button.